Indiana, Arkansas. People come from a long ways here. Let's get into it, Shane. 125 pounds, Drew Hildebrandt for the Nittany Lions. Sixth year wrestler out of Granger, Indiana. Four and one this season. A two-time All-American for Cale Sanderson. He came over from Central Michigan where he wrestled for Coach Tabarelli, and he has slid in perfectly. He really has, and he's got to fit into this Nittany Lion culture, which is a culture of learning, improving your wrestling. And I think he's settled into the weight now, Shane, here with this, you know, getting started in the second half of the season. He's a big, tall drink of water there at 125. Got a big bone guy, a great frame. Tough in the top position. Can't push into him too much. You're gonna get a slide by if you do. So it's really a challenge for Ibarra to kind of stay in position and just go out there and battle. Ibarra, redshirt freshman out of Tucson, Arizona, Sunnyside High School, three-time Arizona State champion. Five and two this season. And that's the one thing that, that Hildebrand has, has not got off to really fast starts. He's been able to go ahead and, and move steadily through the course of the match and build on leads. Last week we saw him against Michigan. Fell the top rank, Nick Soriano of the Wolverines 2-1. Followed that up with a major decision at Michigan State against Tristan Luhan on Sunday. Good reaction there by Ibarra. You know, he took that good shot right there. Wasn't able to get to it, but, you know, with that range that, that, that Hildebrand has, was able to go ahead and square up and get back up to his feet. That's a good sign for the Hawkeye. No score, 60 seconds in. One of 10 individual matchups here in Iowa City. Hildebrand this season has scored six takedowns. He's given up one. The two-time MAC champion for the Chippewas. And the, the second takedown attempt there by Ibarra, and he's able to go ahead and get back out. I think what Ibarra doesn't want to get into a pushing match because that's what you're going to see right there. You put a lot of pressure forward into Hildebrand, you're going to see that slide by, and he follows up really well with that to get to somebody's legs, gets to his opponent's legs, and long, rangy wrestler. Yeah, when you see him in person, he's tall. Yeah, he's he's a couple inches, it looks like a couple inches taller than Roman Bravo Young, the 33-pounder. Had a great national tournament last year, fourth place finisher. Won a lot of tight matches. Had a nice win over Fingers. Brody Teske, 4-2. That was in sudden victory. In that third place match, fell to the 15th seed, Patrick McKee to go for a great tournament. 5-3 was the final there. 50 seconds, no score in this first period. I mean, Barr is doing exactly what he needs to do to keep stay in this match, and that's what you want to do. You want to this situation go. gain a little confidence. It's not a physical match right now at this point. Both guys having a difficult time. You know, but this I sense that uh, Hildebrand has been able to score quite frequently at the end of the period. Look for him to go through his one of his best shots. There There's it is, a single right leg, and Ibarra able to kick away his right leg. The fans appreciate that effort. Good defense there. 20 seconds for a short time in the first as they wrestle forehead to forehead. And just a little subtle things right there, even a little head snap there the crowd got into. So there hasn't been much physical action, but they know that they're a little bit undermanned right now, this crowd does, against Hildebrandt. And they're happy with this first period. Of course, Spencer Lee has manned this 125-pound post, and he's been one of the all-time greats. Three-time national champion for the Hawkeyes, of course, Recently undergoing Three. knee surgery. Three. We wish him the best in his recovery. He'll be back next Set. year aiming for that fourth national crown. We're neutral here in the second. We're neutral, and that was Ibarra's choice is to go ahead and go on the feet. And I think it's a good call. Doesn't want to go under that long, length, lengthy pressure. He had a good period. Would you say advantage Ibarra in that first period? I really would. I think in advantage Iowa anyway. And I don't necessarily for Ibarra, but you know, they have to, the Lions have to be thinking that this is bonus point opportunity for this big duel. And go scoreless in the first period with not a lot of action here. Doesn't really favor the Lions, but Hildebrandt's one of those guys that gets a takedown. You can get up on top of you here, put up back points, and I think that they know that. That's why Ibarra chose neutral. In that win against Michigan State, he picked up his first major decision of the season. Did Hildebrandt's? 
Back in 2020, he was a sixth seed at the national tournament. That didn't happen. He was 31 and three that season. So he's had a really good career. And seven minute. There's a committed shot there by Hildebrand. He's going to switch off to a double. And he'll Two, get the take points right there. Taking advantage of that long reach and bringing his lower body to that knee pick and driving through and getting the second leg. And good work. And this is trouble for Ibarra right now. He didn't want to be in the bottom position. Hildebrand will go to work on top, building his riding time. Note that Penn State scores the first takedown in this duel. Ibar in a tough spot, he had elbows out. Yeah, you, you don't like to see that if you're rooting for the Hawkeye here. You get those Both elbows out. It's really it. easy to grab those wrists right there. And you see that figure four up high on the leg right now. Not a lot of action by Hildebrandt to really trying to turn Ibarra. So, but a 2-0 period and you're in big matches in this situation. Finish the period in the top position is huge. Hildebrandt. Riding time near 50 seconds to finish the period on top. Here's that first strike. Yeah, take a look at that, the reach and watch his, him go ahead and get a better angle as he drives across and takes that long arm and reaches across. But it's not just the reach, Shane, it's to be able to drive with the lower body and getting bouncing and moving. He's able to collect that back leg. Green on top. Hildebrandt will start period on bottom. Tight waist ride there. Bar trying to get a little bit of that riding time back. Hildebrandt to his feet. Now he's got a single leg and a switch off to a double. A scramble here by Two. the Nittany Line. Reversal. A reversal. Now 4 nothing. Yeah, you can just see the size difference. This, this Hildebrandt is just huge at this weight class and able to go ahead and hit a nice little switch right there. But again, if they in a great position to open up this match, I think that looking at the Penn State corner, they're really wanting him to stay in the top position, the best way for him to extend his lead here, is in the top position, see if he can get a, a tilt. He's gonna take riding time over a minute. Slides, legs in, a lot of pressure on the Hawkeye Ibarra, extending him underneath, he's flat on his belly. And this is the point in the match here where you, you gotta keep moving in the bottom position if they're the Hawkeye because, you know, you get dominated like this, you can give up and start giving up stall calls. And starts. And in a match like this, Jim, this is big if you're Ibarra right now, you got to fight for the team. You cannot go over. You have to keep this in a regular decision. Yeah, you've got to try to hopefully Action's work hard, and maybe hard Action. enough to get a new start right now. But again, both legs are in. You can't really turn a guy right there. And there's a high, a power half right there. And Ibarra guts it out right there. That's a pretty good job. Looked like most guys would go over. But it's tough, tough to do that when you've got both green. legs in. Green, green stone, There's a green. skull call on Ibarra. Action, Not necessarily. That's one of those dominating positions where you've got both legs in. He can't turn his hips if he wanted to right now with both legs in. Hildebrand's got to pick a side and try to turn the hips in that direction. Goes back to that half Nelson. A lot of pressure on that left shoulder. Is he going to go over? He one, is. Right two, there he's got three, points as he four. goes over. He's got the high bridge. That's going to be two points. Inside a final 10 seconds, a turn for four. Hildebrandt is fired up. It's a major decision. His seconds of the season with the riding time, 9-0. Hildebrandt's over Ibarra. Jim, we speak about it all the time. Short time scoring. That was big time from Hildebrandt. Well, that was a take a look at this. Going really hard with this half Nelson. Okay, that is really hard right there. He's got both legs in. Notice that the hips don't turn, right? But finally they do with all that pressure on the shoulder, the high bridge by Ibarra. Too much for him to stay off his back. Got the count. One extra team point. 133 pounds. These two no strangers to each other. This will be the sixth time they have met. DeSanta won those first two matches. RBY was a true freshman. The Nittany Lions made some adjustments. Yep, and, and you take a look at this video here. What were the adjustments that RBY did? Look at him put that left arm behind his back right there. He knows that that's what DeSanto wants, and he wants to stay away from that. And that was the key here to the adjustments. Frustrating DeSanto's tie. Here we go. Wrestling with Good one arm and one arm behind his back to keep position. And you know, you mentioned this before off camera, Shane, and I agree with you here. You talk about the last three years. One of the guys that has improved the most in the country is this man, Roman Bravo Young. So tough with his defense, being able to explode with his offense. 
he is just so well-rounded. Yeah. On his feet, Jim, 52 takedowns. He's only given up one, and you see him creeping that left shoulder back. Creep, creeping that left shoulder back, and now puts him in a good defensive position. See how he's going to slide back right there, circle out of it. He knows that that right arm of DeSanto is what he wants to get on his tricep right there. He's not giving it to him, and he'll come to the wrist right there. So that's the adjustment. The and that's from DeSanto, but, but the hips from mm -hmm. RBY. DeSanto head to the outside on his shoot tops. Can he finish it against RBY? It's tough right here. He's got to shoot his laces flat here. He's, RBY is dangerous. He's got to go ahead and try to switch off to the double here. Can he get him off of his feet? And that's where you see that defense showing up one more time. Heavy hips. And they wrestle at the edge. DeSanto now to his feet. But limited real estate for the Hawkeye, and they're out of bounds. But yeah. that's what DeSanto has to do. Yeah, this is the adjustment DeSanto made. He decides to go to the other leg, the fireman's carry side. He just wasn't able to come up with the, the, the shot. Now he's coming to the leg he wants. So he's attacked to both sides. This is a interesting position here for DeSanto because RBY make, has that win Dixie move where he can take you right to your back. Against a guy like RBY, Jim, we've seen DeSanto get to the legs twice, but how does he finish? He's got to be able to get his shoelaces up and drive through the man, and that's so tough because RBY just stops your first move, and he's just got really just a heavy hips, great motion. You never get that clean look at him. But right now is an opportunity for DeSanto to go ahead and really put some weight on that head, tire him out in ways, get him in positions that he hasn't experienced a lot this of here. here. Gentlemen, work Stuck through this. the head, go hard. DeSanto with a heavy pace here in this first period. Crowd getting behind him. This is one versus three in the country. RBY, the national champion, beating Dayton Fix of Oklahoma State. One more Four time. Two. Here he goes again. Will the third time be the charm for DeSanto? And a single leg. He's got to keep moving RBY if he does, which he didn't do now. Now he's in a worse position here to being down on his knees. As he comes out the back door, he switches to double. And he's going to settle in this position for the stalemate. Looks like it. Austin DeSanto having some words with the officials. I think it's about the ankle tie that he's taking right there. And now the intensity is picking up. Well, he's feeding off this crowd, Shane. You said it, Jim. Get 15,000 friends to support you. Half a minute here in this first period. Some good action. We're scoreless. But DeSanto, with a few shots, he's gotten to the legs of RBY, but hasn't been able to finish. These two met in the Big Ten final at State College. RBY beating DeSanto for the third straight time after losing the first two. There's a stall call at RBY. I think that's a great call. DeSanto has been the aggressor in this situation. Now they're looking for that ankle back. See how, so they're going to end, but that was a great sequence there by Austin DeSanto. There's Tom Brands to Sheldon. Sheldon Iowa native in his 16th year in 14 tournaments. Four team national titles. They've taken on 12 trophies, six Big Ten championships. Great first period by Austin Santa was clearly the aggressor in the first period. And this is where Roman Bravo Young has really improved, but that's great news for DeSanto getting that quick escape. Inside of 10 seconds, the Hawkeye is on the board. See that wizard position from RBY as they wrestle near the edge. He's able to scoop the leg. Can he improve his position from here? Keep it legal. Keep it legal. DeSanto hunting for the head. He'll go back into that front headlock. But these front headlock moves are pretty good, Shane. To get ahead and stuff the guy's head. Make him breathe a little harder. Get him out of his pace. DeSanto, a three-time All-American. He was third at the national tournament. A little bit early that time was the Hawkeye's first caution. I really, at this stage of the match, I really expect... Roman Bravo Young, did. what's his go-to shot right now? What is he feeling out there? Because he hasn't hit any offense. He's just trying to solely go off of the offense, play defense here, roll around, create scrambles. Familiar position. DeSanto, though, stalled again. And that's a stalemate. Again, with this type of action, in these circumstances, with this crowd, you can get that stall warning. He's already got one against RBY. And the crowd knows that. That activity level has all been in the favor of DeSanto. Again, does RBY have an answering shot? 
Right now, right now, it doesn't look like he's hunting for it. Red! Red! There's the second call on RBY. Another point for DeSanto. He leads it 2 0. Head stuff. You see this ankle roll right there. The adjustment that DeSanto has made has been able to keep those ankles clean. Going to try to roll through and create a scramble, but DeSanto doing a nice job of staying in position. You can just see how comfortable RBY is here. Stop. Potentially dangerous call. And don't trust me, there's been conversations with the officials. I'm just presuming that they've had conversations with the officials about DeSanto in the way he covers and grabs those ankles. Tom Bryant's up on his feet, yelling at J.R. Johnson, the outside official. Here's RBY, there it is. just Get like down. that, he ties it up at two. Yeah. Now can he finish period on top? So important because Sandal gets yeah. out here, it's tie match. And this is where he's been able to improve. 2-2 two, two to the third period. Let's take a look at this Roman Bravo Young takedown. Just an elbow shuck right there. What he does when he gets you off balance right there, he runs to the right. He's as good as anybody in the country. He just hey, ran to that single ball, leg. Okay. Such a ball. quick finish yes, from RBY. So smooth and fluid. Set. Yeah, just a beautiful just elbow pass and then just running towards it. Very similar to what he was able to hit. To Santo in the, in the finals of the national tournament. Early in this period, committed in the top position again. RBY, two stall calls against him already. Riding time and non-factor. It's a non-factor as far as where it is right now, but the Santo can really help his stock right now by maybe getting riding time during this sequence here. I don't think he wants to let him up right now. He wants to stay in the top position. He has the ability to collect some riding time already up to nine, 10 seconds. Getting a little bit high though. And RBY is right back in on the shot. Could Still be a green. reversal. Still green. Still green in control. No points Still yet. Still green in control. One right. Santa gets out of it. So escape. And he's right back in on the shot. Here's DeSanto again. He trails it by one with 110 to go. Oh. Bravo. Underneath those hips of RBY. Exactly, Shane. Dropping that hammer on those hips on the button. You see that Santo's in a little bit worse position than he was before after that shot. There's stay just still, not that second here. move once he gets to the leg. He's got to move quickly. One-point match here at 133. A matchup of one and three in the country. DeSanto trying to knock off the reigning national champion. And this is the part of the match. You stay disciplined with your strategy. Not giving that tie up to DeSanto. Not putting him in that position. Staying in the middle of the mat. Looking for your offense. It's too early to go defense. 35 seconds. Hard collar tie from the Hawkeye. Easy with those hands. If the Sandal can take a little bit more forward territory, he might be able to get that call. RBY staying center of the mat, maintaining territory. A couple of half shots there from DeSanto. Really, RBY has not moved out of the center. Now he drops back into a shot. Great time to get on his offense and close out this match in on a leg. He's going to hold on to that. Right leg and Roman Bravo Young. That second period takedown was critical. And he remains undefeated. And for good hands first. All right. Couple words exchanged by Roman Bravo Young and Austin DeSanto. He knew good. it was going to be a fight. Exactly. All good. Penn State's getting victories from Hildebrandt at 125 and Roman Bravo Young at 133. Penn State leads at 7 0. Big 10 rematch coming up next. Our Perler feature match comes at 141 pounds. Feature match brought to you by Perler Wrestling College Recruiting Services. Jim. Grab the popcorn, showtime at 141. Shane, this is the one I was looking forward to here, the, the adjustments there. Jaden the Riddler Eiderman really got solved last year in the national finals by Nick Lee. And Nick Lee has got to get better since that time. But you know what? There's history between these two. 
And this, the guy who goes out there and, and wins the scrambles is probably going to win this match. Hard to believe these two met at the NCAA Championships in 2018. It was Ironman, a major decision, 12 to 4. In that Big Ten final last March, Ironman winning at 6 to 5 with a riding time point. And then two takedowns, one in sudden victory for Nick Lee. And when you speak about Nick Lee, Jim, you refer to shallow shots because Ironman likes you to be deep. Yeah, he does. He wants you to go ahead. He wants to take you into deep water. He wants you to have, drive in on that right leg of his. He cuts the corner so well. And the adjustment that Lee has made is been able to go ahead, take a more shallow shot, switch to a double, hit an inside trip there for a finish in the national finals here to win it in sudden victory. So look for Lee to go ahead and continue that momentum, that pace. And I, I look in this match, the adjustments will be the national finals, Ironman went out there and chased Lee hard. Straight on doubles, two or three times. He really kind of wore himself out in that match. I don't expect that in this situation. I expect a more calm, cool, collected Ironman. Couple attacks exchanged. Ironman and Lee, both four-time All-Americans. And the thing about Lee, Shane, is that, that he really puts a lot of forward pressure, really works your head hard, and when he finishes, he can finish with his head on both sides of the body. So it's really difficult for, to cut the corner on him. He's made great adjustments and improvements in his wrestling style and his finishes. Picked up his 100th victory against Lehigh. 106 and 13 for his career. 80 of those victories. Bonus points. He caught underneath. Shot by Ironman. Good for both wrestlers right there. Shot by Ironman. Getting the leg back. It looked like that was a tight fireman's carry, but it also good for Lee because got back to the neutral position and he can hunt and peck and stay on the attack. Ironman, a four-time conference champion, three-time MAC champion for the Missouri Tigers, and of course beating Lee to claim the title in the Big Ten. Ironman out of Columbia, Missouri, Nick Lee, Evansville, Indiana. 45 seconds here in this first period. Penn State leads it 7-0. They got a major decision from Drew Hildebrandt at 125. Roman Bravo Young in a tight one. He nipped Austin DeSanto. Nice reactions there by Ironman to that uh, sweet little drag there that Nick Lee did. Again, if you can't lift up and go for the attack, you go ahead and go around it with that arm drag. These two guys are, particularly Lee, is really good at getting that subtle little angle before his shot. Right there, see now he's off, off to the side a little bit. and see if he's able to do something here. Short time. Short time, gentlemen. Short See, time. He's off to the side with it, and he drops in on the leg anyway. He's just, that's what he is. He's just looking, always looking for that angle to take that better shot. Lee and everybody score his first period. Kale Sanderson in his 13th season at Penn State in 11 national tournaments. They've hoisted that championship trophy eight times. They've won the Big Ten title six times, of course, as an athlete, 159 and 0, undefeated for the Cyclones of Iowa State as a four-time national Three champion, Olympic right gold top. medalist, an Olympic gold medalist yes. in both corners here tonight. Well, he's the Olympic gold medalist in calm, you know, and that's, you, know, you couldn't have a better guy to bring a team in and have them, you know, give the best version of themselves because he's just so calm there in that corner. And the guys go out there and perform for him. Nick Lee, Matt return, going to work on top. Yeah, Talk Nick, about calm, Nick Lee is calm also. Yeah. His feet off that energy, always trying to improve their wrestling positions. Good adjustment there Still by alive, Lee Still alive to here. get that right foot back inside the circle. He's building riding time now past 30 seconds. And this is really important for him because this gives him the opportunity to, you know, go in the down position if he chooses to, if he collects no riding time, you know. He choose, actually choose neutral. And that's what he did in the national final. He never went on bottom. Right. That was the difference from the Big Ten final. And so it's the concept we talk about a lot. You ride the rider, right? And we know that Ironman very tough in the top position. Jack Green, right top. The first time that they wrestled in the Big Ten Championships, it was about that Matt wrestling. He's got riding time. And a quick escape is really what he needs to do right now. Comes back up. And that's the way you do it, right? Threaten the man with something up top and upper bodies circling back into him. And, and they give, Lee just gave up the position. Ironman, second period escape, leads it 1-0. Ironman at the national tournament has finished fifth, fourth, third, and second. Will this be the year he makes that final step to the top? Oh, there's a throw from Ironman. And Lee able to roll through. 
Wow. No control, gentlemen. He's going to go through it again. He's got that chest wrap, and then two, too, take too much of a gamble at that point in time, and he was able to adjust to it and get the double leg. One. Huge sequence there. Now he's back to riding, really putting Ironman in a bad spot. Five to one. Ironman, he went for it. And against a guy like Nick Lee, he's just so one. good. Neutral. Maintains Nick. such great position. Work center. Awareness. Work center. And the advantage time is at 111 here, so don't expect Lee to go down. You know, probably has an opportunity. Oh, new beautiful shallow shot right there. At the edge, and he collects two, the two. Two more for Nick Lee, and he gets it with a second left in the period. Let's take a look at those takedowns there. That was just a beautiful sequence there. Look at this. Ironman almost has him right there, but Lee continues to roll. Gets his belt buckle down to the mat again, squares up. And in this chest drop position, Ironman's gambling. He's looking for the big move. Not against Nick Lee. He's just too well schooled. He keeps his hips back. Coach Gable with the reaction. <laughs> That picture said it all. Lee up by two. He's got riding time at 111, and he's exactly where he wants to be on his feet. The old coach saw what a lot of people did. You didn't have to go for that second one, but center, you know, that's the type of wrestler center. that Ironman is. He's always looking for the big moves, and he, he had the element of surprise on the first one. The second one, not so much. Nick Lee reminds me of a great pitcher. It's going to be tough to hit a bunch of home runs off of him. You've got to play some ABC baseball, in this case, ABC fundamental wrestling to beat him. Yeah, and now he's got to go he's back to that strategy that he had in the first, uh, the, the national finals match, where he's got to probably dive in on some double legs, take some space shots, create some some uh, action where he can you know, look for something big. If he can get a takedown, Jim, and take 11 seconds of riding time off, we'd have ourselves a tie match. And that's, again, you just got to get the first one. And create more activity. These Penn State wrestlers, actually every wrestler here in this match so far has been right there in the middle. They're not playing the edge Light at all. Hey, 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 come here, come here, come here. Nick Lee, mad awareness, butt to the center. Stay in that black circle. And again, Move not your putting, feet. yeah, again, Shane, not putting too much weight into your opponent here, keeping your own balance. And when you're hold, trying to hold the lead, don't lean into your opponent, don't reach and lean. Looking for Center. Ironman to increase his activity level. This is the time where he has to go. He's got to kind of create something. Space shot. His defense from Lee, some fix by the Nittany Lion. Heavy pressure on that collar tie right there on the back of his head. Staying in his stance. He's a full foot below him right now. And he gets going to take it down. He's got a chance to get the fourth sudden victory. Absolutely. as he erases riding time. <laughs> what a huge sequence there by Ironman to get himself back in the match there. Both these guys in short time. We saw Lee in the second period. Ironman here at the end of regulation. A takedown and a ride out. 4-4. Four, four. If he here waits two more seconds, time. Jim, Set. he runs out of time and he loses by one. Yeah, Quick shot he, off the whistle. Right into that double leg we talked about. There, but Lee's able to go around behind and he gets the quick takedown. Eight seconds into sudden victory, a takedown from Nick Lee to silence this Hawkeye crowd. Right. Took him to the limit. Looked like he was almost ready to give it away. Let's go back to the end of regulation and take a look at this takedown by Ironman. Take a look at it. Elbow pass and really caught Lee kind of backing out instead of kind of a re-attacking there. Caught him backing out, choosing the wrong direction. And, and at that point, hanging on for dear life. Breaking the riding time, going to overtime. But what a great job by Nick Lee getting right back on his office. And here's the winning takedown. Reaction, stuffs his head to the mat, heavy hips, steps around that. 149 pounds, ranked 10th in the country, Max Buren and Bo Bartlett, the true sophomore. Wrestled at Wyoming Seminary in Kingston, Pennsylvania. He's from Tempe, Arizona. The Hawkeyes have to get on track here, Jim. This is the momentum stopping match right now here for the Hawkeyes. If this goes awry here, it's, it's really trouble for the rest of the dual meet. 
not saying that they're out of it totally here, but this is really one that you have to point to and say, you know, Mirren is favored here. But Bartlett has been one of those guys that has constantly improved. He's probably more of a natural 141 pounder and likes to attack the leg that, uh, you know, that Mirren keeps back. So don't expect a lot of, you know, quick action right away. But it seems like Max Mirren's matches always go down to the third period no matter who he's wrestling. Gets that last second takedown. It takes a while for him to open guys up. They need him to step up here at 149 as it's 10-0 Penn State's. Mirren losing last Friday night at Ohio State to national finalist Sammy Sassel, 3-2. Bart with a couple of victories at Michigan and Michigan State. Bart with a 141-pounder, but of course with Nick Lee bumping up to 149. Expect him to be down to 141 for the Nittany Lions next season. Bart likes to go heavy with that collar tie. Both these guys like to go straight on. They wrestle a little bit like a, a couple of 57 pounders, you know, there's not really many angles created. That's what the beauty of the last match we saw with the level of wrestling there. A lot of quick angles and, and sets that the guys were able to get at that higher level. That's why they're, you know, national finalists. Max Mirren, first team All-American in 2020. He was 16 and three that season. A couple of more NCAA tournament appearances, two and two. And both 2019 and 2021 Action went into 12 seed. Nice reaction there by Bartlett to that single leg shot. And you know, when you're when you're at a lower weight chain, naturally, you know, low, shorter in stature, you know, what you don't you, you still want to wrestle like that 41 pounder, get down in that deep low stance here, and but don't get caught raising yourself up to the level of your taller opponent because it doesn't really put you in the most athletic position. Keep your stance that you had as a, as a, as a 41 pounder. 45 seconds, first period. Bartlett this season, 10 and three. He's got four overtime matches this season, but three and one in those contests. You know, Shane, both of these schools are so well skilled at not giving up the, you know, the, the cheap go behind. You know, that they don't lean into their opponents, particularly the spent Penn State wrestlers. They spend a lot of time drilling with like one arm behind the back that you saw Easy. with RBY. They're out there doing those types of things as a team daily, so they don't they don't lean in too hard. They aren't stepping into you know putting their foot in a bucket and all of a sudden the guy's in on your leg because you're just leaning and stepping out there. Green choice. No score after three Green minutes. Choice, Iowa. Green with the, the choice, first, he'll defer. Red. And the Nittany Lion down. Bartlett will go underneath. Red set Quick to escapes. Lose. Green on top. See who wins the whistle here, beginning second period. Pimps. Quad pot up for Bartlett. Really important sequence here for Mirren. You know, it's really on the, the first top guy to go ahead and kind of bend the guy down, make him carry your weight a little bit. Don't give him the quick, cheap escape. And Bartlett is, is all about, you know, he's pretty good in this position. He's pretty good at stepping over, you know, creating rolls, hand fighting in there. there they, they tried to roll, but nice job of pinching right there by Mirren. Now he's split his grip. He's gonna run him off a little bit, go hard. Stays with him. Tries to lift him up. It was a good sequence there. Great mat return, Shane. Exactly, 36 seconds now of riding time. Red set, don't move. Green on top. What adjustment can Bartlett make off this whistle? Well, I, th I think he tries to go to some sort of a changeover. He's kind of waiting, and he's limiting himself by just going with this quad pod stand-up. It's pretty easy to break that down. You see Mirren's now over there on the right side. I'd say if there's a side that most college wrestlers are a little bit weaker in, it would be that right side. See the switch attempt? But you're never getting, he's never clearing his hips in the process, and Mirren's able to jump right back down there on the leg. Keep the hips secured to his chest, and we move on to the next mat return. Riding time over Both a minute for the here, Hawkeye. Gentlemen, Bartlett here. again to his feet. And out of bounds. 
And right now, Jim, if you are mirroring, of course, 46 seconds, here's where you want to finish that period on top for sure. Don't give away an escape yeah. here. And you Seven. might want to go to a little bit different breakdown. You see how those ankles are up high like that right now? You might want to drop in on an ankle. And he goes right to that uh, spiral ride, puts a little bit more weight on the hands. But, you know, Bartlett's not having a difficult time getting away from it. There's a scramble there. Good, good roll. Yes, we talked about neutral. that right at the beginning of the period. That's what Bartlett's good at. And that's why I was saying make the adjustment at that point in time. Those ankles were given to you. Got an opportunity to drop in. And now Mirren in on a shot. Chance to score. 20 seconds. Single leg for Mirren. This place will go crazy. No control. Good defense no control. here from Bartlett. Time ticking away on no Mirren. control. And Bartlett keeps it a one nothing match. Great fight. I tell you what, Shane, I don't know what happens. If anybody gets any takedowns in this Penn State wrestling room, these guys are all showing great defense on the feet. Mirren had an opportunity to switch yeah. off to a double there in that scramble. Right but on that, top. And it's also good news to him for him. He was able to get to the leg. So. What's the, the sequence here? What's the battle within the battle? Get out in 26 seconds yes. for Mirren. He's able to split the grip, and he does it. An escape by Mirren. 1-1, one, one, but he's got the riding time at a minute 20. His good top work. Early second period. Riding time advantage. Swipes right back in on the shot. Good job by Mirren taking the shot. Getting on his offense early and squaring up. Again, you want to be hunting your offense down at this point in time. But you're confident that you can get out even if you give up that takedown, but keeping the pressure on. And then there gets to be a point and you're kind of in no man's land, and that's about 35, 40 seconds. Like, you know, do I stay on my offense or I kind of just think, you know, shut it down to go right defense. No stall warnings in this match, and that's huge, too. Collar tie for Mirren on that left side. Now Bartlett clears the tie. Look for Bartlett to try to attack that right leg. It's been back the whole match. He's pushing in and Center. putting forward pressure. Is, is Mirren going to allow him to get to that favorite leg? Shot recovery for Mirren. 45 seconds. Hawkeyes looking for their first win. There's a good counterattack. Back into a single leg for Mirren. He's just got to be patient right now. Good elbow deep. Anticipate. He does it. Take down Mirren. 3-1. And he's in the driver's seat here late in the third. This is exactly what the Hawkeyes needed. Exactly. One, Great job by Mirren two, anticipating three, the roll through on four. that. Took his time a little bit more on that finish than he did the, the, the first one. One, two, Keeping his three, left toe four, inside that circle. Four. Let's take a look at this takedown. It's just beautiful. Once he gets the counter shot right there, and he doesn't panic right now, stays in good position, brings that elevation up. And as he turns, he's able to go ahead and get the takedown. Max Mirren brings this Hawkeye crowd to its feet. Iowa victorious of 149 pounds as they close the gap against Penn State. Penn State a quick start. They lead it 10-3. As we head to 157 pounds, it's one versus two in Iowa City. 157 pounds. Also family is Caleb Young, Tom Brand's son-in-law. He's ranked 12th in the country. And he'll meet up against Terrell Barraclaw. Barraclaw out of Haysville, Utah, was a four-time state champion at Leighton. Caleb Young of Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania. Good luck. Check. Shane, this is one of those matches, just like we saw at 125. You know, Caleb Young's had a lot of success. He's the All-American and has an opportunity to go ahead and you know work for. It's not really in his nature to go out there and correct, you know, collect a lot of uh, bonus points. But this is a situation, an opportunity for him to do just that. Get this Young, crowd into it. Three-time All-American was fifth in 2019, a first teamer in 2020, and seventh in St. Louis in March.
Bearclaw doing a nice job there with those double inside collars. That, see it? He's got his hands clasped behind the net on both sides there. Young has gotten back on track. He's won four straight. Two bonus point victories after losing four of five. He's underneath the Nittany Lion. An opportunity for Bearclaw just to square up, burn a little clock, see if there's anything he can go ahead and try to get defensively. But again, a good sign from Tell Young neutral. that he's trying to open this match up, trying to get his attacks, yep. not just sitting there waiting. Bearclaw this season at even six and six. Coming off a couple of defeats in Michigan, he fell to the Wolverines and the Spartans and Will Luan and Chase Soldati. 145 here in this first period. These are the weight classes the Hawkeyes really need. 49, 57, and 65. The Hawkeyes with three All-Americans. There's a shot for Barraclaw on a single leg. Yep, gets right back down on his shot, comes out, tries to come out the back door. He's in good position to be able to create a little hip separation, maybe score, but... No control, gentlemen. Uh, no control. Young. Keep everything legal here. Got those ankles tied up pretty tight right there. They'll probably end up in a stalemate. Stalemate, we're neutral. That Jim Gibbons, New York Times bestseller, protect your <laughs> ankles. I wrote the foreword on that. Yeah. <laughs> You've wrote the forward on a lot of my stuff, so. <laughs> Back to their feet. So, got in that position there, but Young tried to, tried to shoot to the leg with the white knee pad and came back and tried to go to the other side. Again, trying to grind his opponent down. I'm impressed with Barraclaw just staying right there in the middle, presenting himself when the shot was there for himself, and he went ahead and attacked that lead leg, took a stab at it. Another shot there from Barraclaw. Top collar tie in the Hawkeye. You know, and I think, you know, if you're, if you're in Barraclaw's situation, he's got this down to wrestling one guy. He doesn't have all 15,000 people in this match because he stayed in the center, kept his weight, Attack when he wanted to. And it's, again, we've seen good uh, first periods by the guys that aren't favored in these matches. Good solid tactical wrestling from Barraclaw. So you mentioned he's right in that black circle. Another attack late. Bonnie Brands excited to be here. She's been in a lot of these matches. She's seen a lot in this arena. Well, th what I enjoy is that she always comes by our, our, our booth or our table here and gives us a hug. And, On and, top uh, red. I like that woman. I think she's a really neat person, and I wish she'd get to know my mom. Good ride here from Barraclaw early in the second period. Young to his feet. And able to move just an escape. Good quick escape there, Shane. And again, it seems like a lot of, uh, you know, Young's techniques tend to open up late in the, the match and wears heavy on the head. Kind of like a lot of what we saw with Mirren. Guys that are having a difficult time getting through the head hands defense, but that's who they are. Big Ten finalist Caleb Young fell to Ryan Deacon 6-0 in that Big Ten final. Bearclaw really doing a nice job coming to that inside collar tie when they break free. It seems like Bearclaw has the inside position. Comes inside. Action, right, gentlemen, action. Left hand collar tie inside. Comes inside again with that left hand collar tie. And puts a little motion to it. Half shot there from Young. And I think that that's what Young needs to do is kind of go a little more in and out, a little more sewing machine, in, out, in, out, in, out. Get, get moving, get a little bit of lateral motion. And open his opponent up. And again, an impressive job on, on, on the feet by Bearclaw from Penn State. Are you surprised Young has not been hit with stalling? Uh, yes, no, not, not, I, I'm not surprised. I, I'm, I don't think that there's enough by either wrestler to, to, to give a stall call at this point. Both guys are having a hard time getting through head hands defense. 15 seconds here in the second period, an escape by Young. 12 seconds into the second period, the only tally on the board. In a situation here, Jim, if you're Barraclaw, you are in it to steal it in the third period. You are, yep. Just, just one little go behind away from making it your match. So if you can get out quickly, 
The Nittany line will go on bottom. In these kind of matches, Jim, you can Fresh trip on the mat tape and lose. <laughs> You know what? It's funny because there's a piece of double mat tape over there where the man has worn out. I walked the mat today. That's what you do in big matches. You can go out there and walk the mat. Great turn here from Young, popping right back up. There's another one. This time he's got him on his belly. Yep. Nice job, too, of covering the hips there really hard. That hard left-handed tight way. See how he re-gripped on that. He's got those hips really tight. When Barrelock Caulk comes up to his feet, he can really just do almost not worry about locking his hands. As that claw right sunk in deep. But he can go ahead and just lift him with one arm. Now the leg is in. I don't think that, uh, I think Young would prefer to get off the mat right now, and they do. You see the Penn State corner with Kale Sanderson, Cody Sanderson, just encouraging, keep that pressure, increase the pace and the attack rates. Well, it's the next 34 Cut. seconds here. If you can go ahead and create that activity and, and create that escape, it's really going to help him potentially steal a match. Yeah, one, okay. We go on the whistle. Set. On top. Cut. Right away off the whistle, sinking in that claw right, thigh prime to right. Now goes tight waist. Because you see how he came up to his feet. He, you know, what we saw before. You know, in that, in that match there with, with, with Ironman where he, where he basically stood up and he turned in and really tried to get forceful with the upper body. You see how Bearclaw is. He's got his nose over his toes. And this is pretty easy to follow because the rear end is back into what you want to be grabbing here, you know? So all you do is sink that tight waist. Keep it right here, feet, gentlemen. Keep I think it you right try here. to threaten him with an upper body move and see if he brings his hips back Set, and create move. some space to be On able top. to get the escape. Eight seconds away from riding time is Caleb Young. There's the second caution now on Barraclaw. Okay, that's two, be okay, that's here. the point. Next okay. one, it'll be a point to Caleb Young. I think he knows Set, what he's doing move. there. Look, we you know, timing top. the jump, you get two freebies. He sees it, comes up. Again. Barraclaw fighting hands. See that chest is sealed to those, the back. Sealed to Bearclaw's back. He's in a good athletic position to be able to follow. Again, Bearclaw's nose are over the toes. No hip separation at all. A relatively easy mat return under those circumstances. Takes riding time over a minute. No oh. big booming mat return from Caleb Young. Yeah, that one he had locked up right there. Popped his hips in. Changes the angle of the body on the way down. Is that six, seven mat returns from Young? Yep. And that's what you have to do sometimes in these tight matches. Go off the mat. Final 10 seconds. And after dropping the first three matches in the duel, Max hey, Miller and Caleb Young Set. at 149 and 147 respond for the Hawkeyes. Proud on their feet once again. And again, one more time with the nose are over the toes. You just can't get it done with a guy who knows how to return you to the mat. A shutout from Young at 2-0 for the Hawkeyes. One versus two, this one has not disappointed. We got a long way to go, it's gonna be fun. 10-6, Penn State after five matches. Shane Sparks and Jim Gibbons back inside in the electric Carver Hawkeye Arena. Penn State winning three of the first five matches. Jim 10 to six. No big surprises, but still plenty to be decided. Well, that bonus point by Drew Hildebrand against, uh, you know, Ariba uh, at the first match here, making me loom large in the whole dual meet here. But again, no first period takedowns. These teams have been battling the whole way through. Nittany Lions. Lead it as we head to 165 pounds, the three-time Big Ten champion, the Bull, Alex Marinelli, now ranked fifth in the country, and Brady Berge for Penn State. Marinelli with just one loss here inside Carver Hawkeye Arena. He's 22 and one all time, a big six-point throw from Vincenzo Joseph, familiar between these two. I tell you what, that was a great war between those guys. Chancellor Joseph getting the nice throw right there, but you know, it took a two-time national champion to get a win over Marinelli in this building here. He's been tough all throughout his career. Marinelli coming off a loss 
to Carson Harshla of Ohio State. His first loss of the season. That was a 3-2 match. Just one loss here in Carver. 22 and one all time. He's been a staple in this Iowa lineup. Three-time All-American. And look for Marinelli to really control the pace, go forward here. Not only the poor pressure on the head, I look for him to go ahead and try to take a lot of territory and get his Center! opponent to go ahead and Center! lean into him a little bit more. With a heavy collar tie and hit that post and get to a shot. Man, there's there a stall call. There's the, one on Bergie. there's the adjustment, Shane, taking territory. The Hawks weren't taking territory, even in those matches where they were favored here. Expect Marinelli to get right on there with the forward pressure. If I would have told you, Jim, two months ago that tonight it'd be Brady Berge for Penn State, what would you think about that? <laughs> I go, well, he's in Brookings, South Dakota. How's that going to happen? That's where he was an assistant coach there for Damian Hahn, Jack Rabbits. Got an opportunity to come back, and there's right there on the oh. shot. Center! Skipping away is Berge. Center! Showing a little bit of uh, old coaching skills right there. You know, you become a coach, you all of a sudden... You Learn all the tricks really quick in the last six Center. months. Just scoots out of that single leg attempt. Marinelli, heavy hands, always a lot of pressure on the head, pulling. Yeah, Berge coaching at South Dakota State. Damian Hahn saw that he had the itch. They had some conversations, and he's back at State College. Keep it center, drops keep it center. Yeah, drops in the leg. A big step right there. It kind of got out of balance there with that big step. You know, you don't want to be that, there right there back in on a shot one more time. He shelves the legs. A little bit better position right now to close it out. And he collects, that ankle. Two, yeah, collects the far ankle and gets the two. Marinelli with a first period takedown. I believe that's the first for the Hawkeyes. And it's the first in the meet. Third takedown of the duel for Iowa. Mirren had one, Set red. as did Jaden oh, Ironman. Interesting to see what the choice is right now with Marinelli. He's going to go ahead and try to stay in the top position. Not really known as one of those guys that's going to go out there and you know turn you over, but he will come out to the side here, a little double trouble, bear hug type situation, take, try to take him from his feet to his back in the mat return. Berge tripoding. Pinching that right side, now scooping up the near ankle, the Hawkeye. And one thing about getting a little riding time in this situation, Shane, you can sense whether your opponent is breathing, you know, if he's okay, whether he has that level of strength, I mean, what, are, what techniques are going to work, and a good mat return right there. Every time you do something like that, you get a feel for your opponent's position in the match and his intensity and his willingness to compete. And now 25 seconds away from finishing this period on top. Hey, still live Such here a at big the difference end, between Russell two here. nothing and two one. Got to get greedy right here if you're Marinelli. Berge looking to creep outside, get himself a fresh start. Smash down one more time. <laughs> There's his wife, Mariah Marinelli, director of operations here at Iowa. She's into it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Green, hold on. Tense. Hold on, Green, hold on. Hold I'd on. like to know Set what her red, final message top. is to the bull Set when he solid. toes the line. She's tough. Uh, she's got a red cape. <laughs> Go out there and charge. Solid first period for Marinelli. A takedown. Finishes period on top. Right at 118. Let's take a look at his first takedown. Drops in, a little bit better position. Hey, Red's got one right. stall call here. Berge gets Green away set. from a little On bit further, Red. just going out there collecting that yes. far ankle. And I like the choice here, Jim, for Marinelli, not deferring, but going on bottom. Yeah. Your lead. The reason why I like that, too, is because you just changed the perception of the match right now. All of a sudden, you had the choice. You go down. You know, if you're on top right there, you know, you may give up a stall warning or something like that. You really don't want to be there. Quick escape, though, gets him right back in and on the action, so technically he's got a 4-0 lead with the riding time holds. Alex Marinelli. Remember, most bonus of the time... Points be big. Yeah, most of the time when you're looking for bonus, you're going to need at least... You're going to need ride outs. You need three to four takedowns. He's got one already. Along with those three Big Ten crowns, he's a three-time Midlands champion. And Berge, you know, I look at his situation right now, it's an opportunity for him to go ahead and steal one. If you got a guy hunting a major on you, all of a sudden you get aggressive, you get a guy getting too, uh, you know, too much forward action, go forward. It's time for him to hit his go-to shot to stay in this match. Halfway through this second period, 
Berge out of Casson Manorville. Was a three-time state champion. Been to the NCAA tournament a couple of times, looking to be an All-American. And right now, you can get one more takedown in effect by just going ahead and pushing forward and maybe getting Berge backing up, but backing out a little bit. Following it up here, maybe get a stall warning. He's already got one, does Berge. Next one will be a point. And this is where the crowd Center. gets involved. Center! That underhook trying to jack him up. Red. And Stay. there's that second stall call, a point for Neutral. the Hawkeye. Taking territory in these big dual meets is huge. If you can go ahead and do it, you get the referee on your side, you get your crowd behind Check. you. These are the points that visiting coaches don't like to give up. Hey, stay off the fingers. Guys wrestling center of the mats. Late in the second. Marinelli, two points in the first, two more here in the second. And he'll take a 4-0 lead to the final period. It was a good period by Marinelli. You know, there wasn't too much scoring there, but he got the escape and he got the stall point. It's one less takedown he has as he tries to hunt for a major decision to get Red, that you point two back. Stall calls here. You think he tries Set. to turn him, Jim? Or no, I, Does I he want to be on his feet. I think I think he's going to try to be patient in the top position, and I don't see much action from the corner telling him to let him up. Right? It's like, do you have the ability to turn this man, or can you get two or three takedowns? Marinelli with 24 pins in his career. Again, a lot of them are there after he's kind of worn the guy Both down men. a little bit, gets double trouble on him. Again, you got to be thinking bonus points. You know where you are here. You know what this means to this your team right there. Three quarter Nelson right there. Worms. That was he's trying to do. There's the escape. Neutral. Hustling back to the center is Marinelli. The slower walk from the Nittany line. Hey, let's keep it in the center. Still a long way to go. A minute 20. Is Marinelli going to take the territory? He's going to follow it up with some shots. He's coming hard with that collar tie. Berge holding in there fairly well. Here's a shot. Center! Going to follow Center! it up. Berge's got to be careful. Here's a single leg for Marinelli at the edge. Another takedown he's got. Yep. And you want to ditch it right here. You want to get off the mat here. You don't want to waste a lot of time if you're hunting a major. No action. The referee kind of bails him out of that position. Actually, Marinelli was in bounds. Now he goes to the neutral position, gives the intentional release. This is the way to do it. The riding time is locked up. A takedown and a rider would get the major. And this is the type of pace that you've been known for. And if you're Berge, of course, just fight. You can't give up that takedown. Snap from the bull and out of bounds. <laughs> Another point for Marinelli. Yeah. The bull is just getting points right now for going, you know, taking him straight off. But those are kind of dual meat calls. But this puts him in a position to be able to go ahead and get a takedown and get the major. If you're Berge, you've got to circle in. Another deep shot, single leg. And he's got it. And the major decision is 14 seconds away for Marinelli. Carver Hawkeye is alive. Alex Marinelli put him right back in it with that bonus point move and look at him go. There's that big smile. Have ourselves a new match. 10-10, here's that last takedown and ride out to secure the major for the Bull. Well, the Bull dug deep right here on this one, got it again, got to that leg. And Berge just kind of bailed out on it right there, but I think that was the heavy pressure that he was able to put in on the first period. And you're right, that was two. 174 pounds. These two men in the Big Ten final it was Kemmer, 7-2, and then Storacci. A double leg to win it for the national crown. In that Big Ten final, Kimmer, a four-point flurry to close the second period. It really made the difference in this match, but you know, 
Hemmer has always been the guy that's had the heavy hips. He's always been the guy that ended up being on top in the scramble. And then the NCAA tournament, the, the match pace just wasn't the same. There wasn't the energy in the building as well, Shane. You had 2,500 people in attendance, and sometimes it's just a little bit different. Hemmer used to wrestling in this type of environment. This is going to be a lot of fun because Carter Starachi has done nothing but get better in that Penn State wrestling room since the last time they met. Michael Kammer, 25 and one all time here inside Carver Hawkeye. That lost Jim in January of 2017. It's over five years ago. That was the Jason Nolf done at 157 yeah, over this, five years ago. This will be a battle. One and two in the country. Locking horns here at 174, the duel 10-10. Kimmer, four-time All-American. Starachi, impressive as the 2021 Big Ten Freshman of the Year. Capped it off with the national title. And as you said, Jim, another year in that Penn State room. Expect big gains from Starachi. And they've just done that. He's just continued to get better. And you take a look at him. He's, he's taking territory in his matches, in and out. He's diving in on those legs. And I think one thing that was discounted right there is just how good right here he is in finishing. Or, or just getting back to a neutral position. He can take risk, and he comes back, and I think he's extremely strong in his core. Really difficult to take down. Great balance. I was talking to David Taylor about Carter in, in, in the Penn State wrestling room, and really impressed with this young man's work ethic, how he goes about his business every day, trying to improve. He's serious about wrestling. He had a gritty national tournaments he was the number three seed in the semis he knocked off the number two seed Demetrius Romero of Utah Valley two nothing here's Starachi single leg double leg great job by Kemmer squaring his hips up just sinking down getting a little bit better it looks like he was most guys get taken down right there let's face it and we are back to our feet hip defense from Kemmer to keep this zero zero and again, in the Big Tens, Kemmerer was able to get to his shots. A great flurry. The timing with Starachi has been pretty impressive as well. It looked like Starachi had it, it him, but in those hips. Nice shot there again. Got a left-handed shot right there. A little crack down here. He's pretty solid with this roll to attempt, right? The no battle is the left arm no right there by Starachi. Gentlemen. Now the hips. The strong hips, now the shin whizzer. Incredible no defense from here, Kimmer. Gentlemen. Just over 30 seconds, first period, the Hawkeye able to square up. High level, guys. Put that on the tape right there. Fingers, let him go, let Jim, him what go. does it do as an athlete when you give a guy like Kimmer two really good attacks and you can't score? Well, you just, you know what? You just keep going, right? You just keep going. You don't get frustrated about that. Actually, you gain confidence that you were able to go ahead and get in there. You just got to make a few adjustments, and maybe later in the match it'll open up. But for Kemmerer, boy, he's really fought off really hard and really well. Incredible defense right there by Kemmerer. Here's the defense from Kemmerer. Look at the fight right there. Double leg. Most guys go, but see how active his legs are there? He pops up. He keeps his shoelaces flat here, drops his hips on him chest up once again gets cracked down right here now the left arm okay. right look at the left arm of Strachi. most spies get that across he was able to block that off shove the head to the inside great defense there by camera incredible one new quick escape from Strachi is camera and that's content the thing to give him the escape you know shane that's the thing that's been impressive about impressive about Strachi is that he does all the little things well that you don't see i mean creating those flurries and all that but, but getting out quickly Quick escape, one nothing, Starachi. This is a pace, the way this match is going. Again, Kemmer has not been able to get to the legs of, of Starachi. Once he does, he's good at cracking down. But Starachi's been the one to get to the, the shot. So look, this is the time in the match right now where I think that, that Kemmer really has to come forward and show what he has on his feet. Look for him to take a little risk. Very similar to that national final. Yeah. Right green, there, once again. Green stalling, green! Stall warning right there. A little bit better finish right there. Now he's finishing below. No One more time in on the shin whizzer. He jumps off that shin whizzer. Starachi coming up hard. And he's got an opportunity to go ahead and roll through. Camera 
has the no near control. leg. Nobody's now he gets control. a little bit of elevation. Can he come back Nobody's into it? Hammer looking for a takedown. Probably going to get he into a stalemate situation. Here, we'll see how long they let him wrestle. At the key time there, Strachi got a little bit of elevation himself. Notice how he's got his head up and he's got a better position to create a stalemate. So, wow. Go, I'm breathless, Shane. This has easy, been easy. a lot of great action. Let's go. Back to neutral. It is a 1-0 match. Set. So, adjustment there by Strachi. Looking to fingers, kill Sanders. Fingers, gentlemen. Fingers. Let him go. With the collar let him go. tie, then go into his shot. Let's see if he... Right there, there's the collar tie for Strachi. And these sequences have been right there. Here's his best opportunity on a single leg. Does he have enough time? Ten seconds left for Kemmerer. A lot of pressure there from Strachi. No control, and We're going to go one no nothing control. to the third. I like that finish Free attempt, choice. though. You see how he tried to gator roll off of that? So, Nico Megalutis from Penn State did that move a lot, get on the leg, make a little roll like that, and then try to attack the far leg. Iowa, you got There's one stall call here, okay? It was the number one seed. He's got one stall call. He does. In 2020 Set. tournament did red. not happen, unfortunately, for Pat Lugo. I tell you All-American. It's just a shame of what happened with those yes. Pat Lugo and you know, Luke Fletcher, Colin Moore, Vincenzo, and Mark Hall. Look at that flurry. Starachi stays one. right with him. Two, he's got the ankles. Now he's going to work up. That yeah, is a great job of following here. He's collecting riding time. Tough work in the top position from Starachi as the challenge brick is whipped across the mat hey. by Tom Brands. And I don't know what, the, uh, what they'd be asking for here. Perhaps a, a locked hand. Possibly hands. locked yeah. hands. Yep, yeah. around the, the legs on the dive. And Tom Brands yes. threw that at about 87 miles per hour <laughs> with 100% conviction. And we've seen over the years when Tom Brands challenges, he knows he knows the rules, yeah. and he's successful more than most. He is. Take a look at what they're looking at. These riding situations. Start, okay, jumps out. We're going to get a look at the hands. I think it's going to be down low if it did occur. Right there. Does he have his hands locked at that point? I don't think. It doesn't look like he does. But See the brick the other, flying through? The other thing, okay, he's on his feet. Looks like the arms are split. Can't, doesn't really, can't really tell from that point. Again, Kimmer makes the big turn, but he can't keep any elevation. His head goes to the mat. Locked at that point, we lost the feed there. But each team with one challenge, if you lose that challenge, it's over, you know. And it's, it's I'm not saying that this is part of it, but you know, you, it's an important sequence here for Kemmerer. I don't think it hurts them, them to go through this challenge. Maybe Strachi lo lost his, his or blocked his hands right there, but it also gives you a chance to recollect yourself a little bit and think about the bottom wrestling. Let's see if. Take one more look at it. Down. I haven't seen it. Yeah, we After we further really review, the call stands. No locked hands. Reds on top. Green's down. Yeah. Regardless, though, a little more perspiration. Right, you've been sitting around there for a minute here. A little more flush. Right. You get hold red. Hold red. Rest. Keep Set the pace up. On top. And it's hard to ride a guy. When it's this warm in here, in this situation, now Kemmer coming out using those hips. Goes with an underhook. How strong is Tarachi to keep that going for longer than he did? 1-1. One, one. So Iowa is out of challenges for the remainder of this duel. Penn State still has their challenge brick in hand. So Iowa cannot challenge any more calls. Of course, the officials, at their discretion, can elect to review a call. Both wrestlers have been so close. On their attacks. Each with an escape. Clock shows 60 seconds here in regulation. Starachi's been the closest on his feet. No question about it, but is he, is he willing to go back in there and battle those hips in the third period? There's a little misdirection there by Starachi. I like what he's trying to do there. Fake from Kimmerer. Kimmerer's the guy that he's 
Drops back in the lake. Counter shot there by Strachy. He got the head stuffed a little bit. Kemmerer does. And this is what's been amazing to me watching Carter Strachy develop in his career. Is that he does not, just not give up those easy go behinds. He fights hard positions as hard as anybody in the country. There is no quits, hey, no fear from Strachy. Yeah. Here yeah. comes the crowd, and there's the Nittany line head to the outside on a single leg, but the hips from Kimmerer. He's got the grip, bro. Now he jumps in on the leg. Can he knock him down? 15 seconds. Shelfing the leg. A oh, roll oh, from Storacci as they no scramble control. late in regulation. No, no points. And at 174, uh, how fitting. Yeah. There's a time victory. Now. And the timer little time issue right there at one point in time the time the clock was frozen at six seconds so I'm assuming that they'll be able to just run this out and they'll end up going to overtime after a short break Starachi and Kimber again who does this favor I don't know but you know Starachi was in on that shot and I thought for just for a second that Kimber was able to split that grip and then the roll through right at the end Boy, these guys are going at it. Not conceding Overtime. anything, Shane. Such a fight. So typical of just two great programs. Will they should to win. go right to overtime. Yeah. Take a look at this, and for some reason, we had a clock stoppage at about the six second mark. Yeah. Misinterpretation of the official's call. And they started again, and they ended up in that position. That this is the new rule that they can go ahead and get back and make their Gentlemen, quick adjustment. Gentlemen, we have overtime. Sudden victory. Two so minutes on the clock. Shot. Fingers, let them go. Both with an escape. Loving this new rule of the two minute on the feet. Sudden victory. Who's going to take the chance and get right after it? Her finger clasp right. right now. Let him go. Let's go, Hawks. The champ by the Hawkeye faithful. Can Michael Kimmer put Iowa out in front? I like what Strachi's doing. He's getting, he's getting in that kind of a boxing stance here. He's forcing him to move his feet here, creating a little activity. Let's go, gentlemen. It was a double leg that won him the national title in St. Louis. A 3-1 victory in that national final. It'll be interesting to see whether Kimmer just goes right back at it. You know, he's the best in the, probably in the country, that when you go to start your shot, he's leaning into his. Right there. Below the knee. Right there. He's going to be able to go ahead and do it. Oh, Strachi's got his left leg. And he's going to elevate right here. If he can elevate, he puts himself in the Merkel position right there where he laces that no near control. leg and gets the head and arm, he'll score. No control. He's trying to creep in that no right control. arm. No control. Look out, look, look for no the left control. toe right there. You can't do that. That's potentially dangerous. Got to catch that quicker. Really, in that situation with the left ankle right there, Kemmerer was fortunate here because Tarachi was really working it hard against the joint. Hey, lay those so old fingers. Much Let me go. Thirty seconds. What's it going to be? There's a shot from Storacci. And in that single leg, head stuff to the inside. Camero now has him flat. Can he slide that ankle no out? Control. Final this 10 time. seconds. Can he get no it? Control, behind the ankle, no behind the arms. Does he have the no locked up there with a workable position? Doesn't look no like control. it. He gets oh, the takedown. Did he beat the clock? That's the question. I believe he did. The referees, I think, believe are going to take a look at this. So this Merkel position that they're in, the head and arm, and if you have the near leg lace right there, should you have be no, a takedown. Should be a takedown, but I don't know if it happened during right during the uh, sudden victory time. Right there, he's pretty much got it locked up right there, head and arm. He gives the two at that point. My question to you, Jim, is 
I didn't see anything change in those final seconds. It looked like the same position with three, four After seconds. After further left, review, as it was with one second. no time was on the clock. No time. No takedown. I think that's a good call. I really do. I think that's a good call. The two off the board were back to 1 1. Green. Kimmer with first. choice. Hilde Red first. Dorachi going on bottom. The riding time erased. This is where every single second counts in this top position. Every second. Set. Top. Both these guys sweat dripping. They got to be exhausted. Quick stand up. Coming up underneath, now adjusting his camera. Camera oh, didn't want to stay with the position, so Strachi able to get the quick escape. That surprised you? A little bit, yeah. But, you know, it's going to look for Strachi just to take that advantage into the next position and try to go ahead and see if he can do the right out. Hey, let go of those Kemmerer fingers, right now to get going. I'm surprised they didn't get a little more ready on top. Yeah, well, I, I think... We're looking Green at choice. a young man that has a shoulder brace and all, all that. It's really tough to ride a guy when you've got something maybe ailing you in that position. So saving some energy here for the bottom position. 15,000 getting behind Michael Kemmerer. Explosive stand up, but Starachi stays with him, snakes in his right leg. Nice change over right there. He's got the hand covered. If you can go ahead and continue to get the hips out, you don't have to hand fight. You just got to keep moving. One, two, Look at three, the power from Starachi. four, five. Good. Come back into him. There's a stall warning. We're getting a count. One, three. We lock. Now there's a... One point offered up there, I think it's a, either, is it a locked hands call or a stall warning? Angel Rivera and J.R. Johnson discussing. That was only the first. Yeah, the first stall call on the drop down. Hey, hey, you see Trevor. when the official was grabbing the wristband right there is asking for the riding okay, time get to off stop. the mat, get off the mat. But the net result is we only have five seconds left here for Kemmer to try to get out. So, Sriracha in a good position to be able to close out this match and pull off an upset. It is Not heated. an upset, he's the number one. Right yeah. Now. It's not an upset anymore. He's the returning national champion. Everybody is into this one. Both coaches, corners. What, what poise that both of these guys have shown in this match, the scrambles, Particular Carter Starachi here being able to get the quick escape. That was so critical. Starachi was offensive, wasn't able to finish shots, yeah. but he was on the legs more. No he's doubt. He's been tougher in the tough position. And, the and, that, and he's kept the pace of the match up high enough You're here not, that he's been the one that's been able to weather Kemmerer instead of the other way around. Oh, five okay. seconds on the clock. Carter Storacci. Nothing. Nothing. With Still a supreme green. effort. Match is over. Iowa. But we'll probably with the clock again here in the building. This is 42 seconds. But Carter Storacci wins a big one for the Lions. 2 1 final. The escape. And then the ride out. Here's the final five seconds. Nice job by. Yeah, clock malfunction. It went to 50 seconds, but five seconds clearly off the clock. And Carter Storacci, what a tough victory oh, for the young Nittany line to put Penn State back out in front. And a back and forth affair. Penn State leading at 13 10. Another national champion looms for Penn State. So much excitement in that match of 174 pounds, won by Carter Storacci, puts Penn State back out in front 13 10.
As you see, Abe Assad for Iowa at 184, ranked 17th in the country. He'll get the reigning national champion, top-ranked Aaron Brooks. Brooks 11 and 0, Assad 9 and 3. Aaron Brooks, pair of victories last weekend. That big one knocking off Miles Amin, second ranked Wolverine 3-1. I still, Jim, don't know how Brooks didn't give up that takedown to Amin. Incredible. You know, Amin was really going for that single leg, and then Brooks was, but you know, Aaron Brooks, we, we bo both agree on this, could be one of the top five wrestlers in any weight class. I mean, of course, he's a national champion. And, and I'm really, I've really been pr impressed with Abe Assad here. His season has been really on the upswing. It's a great opportunity for him, you know, to go out there and battle the national champion. But the national champion is, really, that's been the story of the meet so far. The national champions have held, held serve. Penn State's three national champions victorious here tonight. Couple in sudden victory, and Roman Bravo Young in a tight one against Austin DeSanto. Abe Assad in 2020 was a second team All American, did not compete last year, and he's off to a 9 3 start. Two, take that. Speed is crisp. Just drives back in through that leg, catches his timing. But they're not lying, wrestlers creating better angles, their timing on their shots have been good. One, neutral. Aaron Brooks just kind of exemplifies that whole attacking style that they have. And I think more so than any other probably 84 pounder in the country, he's one of those guys that takes a lot of territory. He's marching into the guy all the time. And if they do step away, he's right back in on the counter shot. Two-time Big Ten champion beat Taylor Vince Moving. to win his latest title. Another Moving. shot. Moving. So much strength, gonna hook a leg. No control, Moving gentlemen, forward no here. control. That's what he does. And just, Two and takes down. Just explosive yeah. power, it's just control, moving in, inching up. It's just like he's climbing rope. He doesn't take both hands off the rope and kind of go up. He's just one. always one arm, next arm, moving forward, next step, you know, driving through a guy's hips, and they collapse just like that. His second takedown, he's up by three. One. And that's when you know you've really got a craftsman here is when they get to the legs and finish as easy as they do. Effortless. Yeah, and so it, it, it's just everything's controlled. He knows his position. That's why he's going to have a fantastic career at the next level. Beat Trent Heidele of NC State 3-2 to win on top. the title last March. 40-1 and one career record. His only loss to Taylor Vins of Nebraska. <laughs> And this season on his feet, Brooks, after these two takedowns in this match, 49 takedowns he has scored, he has given up one. You see that adjustment there that Brooks made? The ankles were flared out in one direction, so he just changed his, you know, he just covered him there by getting on the left side of the body. Stopped uh, Assad's first move. <laughs> 33 straight wins for Aaron Brooks since that loss to Vince. Doing a nice job on top. Riding time for the Nittany Lion over a minute. Another breakdown. Making the Hawkeye carry his weight. See those shoot tops dug into the Resolites. Chest weight right there, keeping weight on the hands. Saad doing a nice job of getting to his feet. Now make the big turn. Get up top and try to see if you can you know, try to threaten him a little bit. Now take a look at this restart. I love this. If you see the ankles are flared out in one direction, he, he was going to get on a, on the left side, but what does he do? He makes that adjustment over there to the right stop and totally stops his first move. Well done. Smart wrestling from Brooks. 23 seconds away. Uh, Preventing this period on top. Feeling a little more Second comfortable one. now. You weren't even here. It's you were over here, okay? The left side. Brooks, the 2020 Big Ten Freshman of the Year. 2017 Cadet World Champion, Junior World Silver in 2018. Let's go, Green. Wrestled at the Olympic yeah. Trials this past April in Fort Worth. Here we go again. Just again, that, that you make that change and then stop that first move and get back over to the make side you're think, comfortable right? on. Yeah, get, make him move over to the side. Make him feel uncomfortable and then get back to the side that you want to be on. Just as good as a jam. These are the kind of periods that win you big matches. Two takedowns.
finishing period on top with riding time at 150. Impressive. Aaron Brooks scores a lot of points. Mention how good he is on his feet. A lot of bonus points. He's gotten better in that room. Yeah, just like a lot of guys have gotten better in that room. But again, down. offense and everything is controlled. You never see him kind of fall out of position, fall to his face on a finish or anything like that, get too aggressive, too overextended. Airtight. Just great feel. Natural ability. And what I like about him, he doesn't stand around out front. Again, takes territory. He gets back up to his feet right here. Saad doing some great competing right there. Again, his future is bright. His trajectory, Saad, is in, in really good shape. Going against the best, one of the best in the country in any way. One, There's neutral. An escape by Brooks extends his lead now five to one. Aaron Brooks out of Hagerstown, Maryland. North Hagerstown, where he was a four-time state champion. 163 and two in high school. And what fascinates me about watching Brooks is that you sit there and look at him and you go, how, how do you take him down, right? Big wide stance, comes in through with power. And again, Two, once again, doesn't down. get too high. Drives in, collects the points. And he's hunting for a major himself. Got the single leg, the chase down the opposite ankle. His third takedown. And we're midway through the Still second red. period. Still red. One neutral. Yeah, here's where he's moving forward, moving forward. Wide stance. Trading action. Look at that. This is, how you, Brooks. this is how you break a guy out of that head hands defense. Hunt, peck, lower level, in, out, get a little angle. Come back to hard to the collar tie. Maybe it entice a bad shot from your opponent. Sets up a go behind. Green, green stall, green. Call. He follows it up with an underhook. You know, so he didn't just take the shot and come out. He followed it up with an underhook and he's back to taking territory, circling his opponent. Right, like guys, a national champion. Back in with another leg attack. On the edge. Final seconds in the second period. Your choice. Your choice. What do you want, down? Brooks working on his. Ninth bonus point victory of the season. Five majors at Tech and two falls. Set on top. Take a look at what he's got here. He's going to try to get probably two more takedowns. Not working that spiral very hard. So I always like to have my guys be real decisive about what, what they wanted to do when they started the period. You know, how many giving them information about how many takedowns that they're going to need to give us that bonus point. Brooks underhook, left side. Working hard on that collar. He got a good glimpse over at his coaching staff and about the eight or nine teammates behind the coaching staff. There's nice a shot, shot from side. Yeah. But into the hips as he tries to clinch a high single. He's coming up with it. Got to watch. Stuff in that head. I tell you what, that's why we've seen the best wrestlers in the country here today is because they don't give up any little cheap shots like this. Assad is really competing in here, but it's just too much. But if nothing else, taking some time off the clock. No question about it. Just competing, as you said, Jim. Just compete. Probably took off 20, 25 seconds with that single leg. And you know, it's not what you want to see necessarily, but you know what, I like what he's doing right there because it's, yep. you know, get on your attacks here. Don't wait for the, some guy to run up to score on you at home. 50 seconds, Brooks needs a couple of takedowns. We'll see if he sprints to the finish, hunting down that major. Forward pressure there by Brooks. Absorbed pretty well by Assad. He is, Assad is improving. This is, there's no question about it. He's made some strides here this season. Center! And I think coming in as a big favorite here, I think Assad with 20 seconds left in the period, you gotta be pretty happy about what he's been able to accomplish in this match. Made it a battle. He's fought hard. Good Not defense there once again. 
Brooks though right back in. Crack down position. No control. No control, gentlemen. No control. Good effort. Good, Good effort. wrestling for both guys. Aaron Brooks, the reigning national champion. I love that sign of respect. You look your opponent in the eye, shake his hands. Going to get another crack at it here, but, you know, we've just seen Aaron Brooks on full display, but what he's able to go ahead and do and bring to the party. Sixteen ten, Penn State out in front. As we shift our attention to 197 pounds, another top five matchup. Jacob Warner for the Hawkeyes. Max Dean, ranked number two in the country for the Nittany Lions. Dean 12 and one. He fell to Cameron Caffey last Sunday. In East Lansing, three to two, his first loss of the season. One ninety-seven and heavyweight. The Hawkeyes they trail it by six. They'll need some theatrics. It's a knockoff Penn State. Warner's been third at the Big Tens on three occasions. The three-time Illinois State champion from Tolono, Illinois, wrestled at Washington High School down in Southern Illinois. And who knows with this hundred ninety-seven pound weight class, really what we're looking at here? These it just it seems like. Everybody from second rank guys, and of course, AJ Ferrari, we're thinking Fingers, about guys. you and, and, and uh, the, the situation that you're in here. And, and I'm sure you're watching this. It looked like this from the speed and recovery. But the, uh, these guys, this weight class is much more balanced than it was last year. Got some guys coming back off of uh, red shirts out of the portal, and it's, it's wide open. And you could be seeing a match like this in the constellations at some point in time in the NCAA tournament that has would go a long way to settling who's going to be the team champion. 197 in the Big Ten, five of the top ten. Cameron Caffey into the top ten after his big weekend. But it's a tough weight class, and when you look at the national landscape in the national tournament, this weight class is going to definitely play a key role in deciding who's taking home trophies. Yeah, she's Shane, 15 in, in the three-seater. <laughs> what difference is it? So, It'll be great. And in this match, you know, Dean, NCAA runner-up, 184 pounds. He knows how to get the legs. Really good at finishing. And that's what Warner does right there. Able to get the takedown. Good counterattack from Warren. And a mad return out of bounds. I'm going to tell you what, Shane. You have changed college wrestling by giving so much <laughs> emphasis to the mat return. These guys are going for it. They I love it. it. We've <laughs> seen some great ones here tonight. <laughs> Tip of the cap, man. In tough matches, Jim, <laughs> those difficult things make a big no, difference. Yeah. And who was good at mat returns? Jim Gibbons could <laughs> mat return. Back in the day. That was an excellent job by Warner there, getting that short angle. And that's what he's always been able to do, or that's always impressed me to be able to win the tight matches, is, is stay in that top position. When he makes his mind up to ride a guy, it's really effective. And with 41 seconds, here we go again. Can you find a way to make that 2 nothing score stand? If you do, you'll have riding time in a minute. And he knows how to, he's got this struck out of that position right there. He's, you see the right elbow came back and Really made that grip really hard, but Warner was able to make the adjustment by coming into the crotch right there and <laughs> taking Dean back to the mat. Now we're down to 27 seconds. Oftentimes, 40, 50 seconds, it might take two or three goes. Absolutely. 15 seconds here, 15 seconds there. This dual meet has not disappointed. You knew there'd be a lot of great individual battles, and that has played out. Look at the adjustment that Warner is making. He's getting that crotch there and running it here. Trying to keep weight on the hands. Dean's doing a good job of coming up, One, but he finds himself in the two, switch position. Three, Who's going to get that? Four, it's an advantage position five. here for Dean. Scrambling in the final seconds of the first period. And I think he's got he's points right there. Well, I think that that position was favored Dean. That's the win, Dixie.
They're gonna and go here ahead. comes the brick. Yeah. Yeah, Warner is his shoulders were close to going on the mat. No, this is the this is the position that that the Penn State wrestlers Jason, this, Nolf. Jason Nolf's position were able to go ahead and get him back down. And there's a discussion going on between Angel Rivera and Kale Sanderson, so they're not looking at it. Of course, you got Tom there defending his position as well. Everything was going great for Warner, and it got interesting in the final 10 seconds. They are challenging loss of control. I don't I, think there's any doubt there was a loss of control. No doubt. That, let's take a look at this. Okay, so now, as he switches into this position, okay, Warner's holding on, and as Warner comes up, all right, that's when he takes him to his back he gets the count but notice how he's got that leg lock around the back of the neck and he totally has control at this point and so the official angel rivera is getting caught up and this is the mechanical part of the officiating you're so caught up into the count that sometimes you can lose track of what the action is it's so exciting out there but i think that this is a, a, a position where you might be able to give a reversal okay So you can see that the Warner is clearly struggling. He's on his back, all right? And that looks to me like control. No change. Yeah. I think you're going to see in the future that that position gets called a little quicker, right? That it absolutely is what it is as far as control. Because, Jim, it could have been, to your point, it could have been two reversal and even some near fall. That's correct. So Warner keeps that 2 nothing lead. He's on bottom here to begin second period. Trying to erase a little riding time because you know Warner's going to be tough on top. Well, we saw this last week, Jim, against Patrick Brucky. Dean was so good on top. Credit Warner there with the escape because Dean could ride. He certainly can. He was able to go ahead and ride Brucky in that match and then get him out of position. So, again... The work that Warner needs to do in this match is, again, forward pressure, get that little angle again, and know that, that Max Dean is as is, is comfortable as he looks out there, right? He's going to be on the attack. He can attack both sides of the body. Dean, a two-time All-American, achieving those honors in a Cornell singlet. National finalist in 2018. Then, as you said, Jim Dunn at 184, that big win at the national tournaments, knocking off the Buckeye, Miles Martin. And beating Drew Foster of you and I to stand atop the podium inside of a minute. I'm really going to be surprised if, if, if Dean can't get to that leg. At some point in time in this match, we end up in one of those scrambles again. Saw a funny picture today, Jim, of Gabe Dean, three-time national finalist, two-time national champion, wearing a Penn State wrestling <laughs> sweatshirt. Of course, he lost to Bo Nickel when he was going for his third title, but great guy in the sport. Dave Dean, of course, their dad, wrestled at Minnesota. Great family. Dave Dean, one of my favorite guys over the years. Here's Warner. He's so good, Jim. Yep, they able to stuff the hips down right there, but he's not able to get to the shot. Now, counter shot there by Dean, so both guys firing away late in the second period. Love the intensity. Here's Dean. Going to work his way back up to his feet as he recovered from that shot. So critical at that point in time. Took the straight on shot. And at that time, Warner not able to get anywhere close to going around it. So Dean is making some gradual adjustments in his attacks here. Getting cleaner looks. Jacob Warner and the Hawkeyes. They have to have this match from Jacob Warner at 197. They trail it by six. Hey, hey, hey. That's on me. Listen, when you get out, Tony Cassiope just get and Greg Hercules. Okay? Set red. They're up next. They had heavyweights. Riding time. Factor caution. right now. Second caution on Warner. Next one is a point. That's on you. Hey, he's, just, on top. he's just kind of slowly slumping on at his opponent right there. Look for him to come into the crotch there. He's got the arm, right arm around. Dean doing a great job of covering the fingers right there. That was a great adjustment. He's made some great adjustments in this match so far. Fingers, guys, time go, is at 52 seconds, so he does not allow that to go over a minute. 
He's a takedown away from tying this. Working hard with that double underhook, taking some territory. Again, you don't want to push too low, low, too hard because Dean changes levels really well. Penn State trying to snap Iowa's 28 Big Ten dual meet win streak. Here's the battle within the battle, Shane. Right? Can Warner continue to go ahead and drift to the right, stuff the head, maybe get an attack in. Can Dean get to that left leg, right, the one that's all taped up right now. That's what he's trying to Green, get to right there. He gets to it right there. And and he gets a his head call. Danger one. One danger count, one. neutral danger. Now he got no both control. of them. So close to near fall was Dean. Holding on for dear life. Now he comes back and gets to the other ankle. He's got to try to pass it. No control, gentlemen. Easy, I thought they easy. maybe gave him the takedown. They did not. No. Dean trying to tie this up. He should score here. Two There's the two. Down. 40 seconds left. He's got the lead. This reminds me of last week against Brocky. He needed the ride out to 4 7 victory. Crank it away on a bow and arrow. Easy. He's got that elbow deep, really tight. Extending that, those toes. Now he figure fours that area there, but not much time. 20 seconds. You don't want to go too hard with this, but he goes all the way with it and collects the back points. Three, and Penn State four. is going to snap this win streak. Once again, Max Dean gets it done in the third period. Four near fall to close it. Tremendous match. Tremendous conditioning. Tremendous adjustments during the course of the match here to gradually improve, always improving his position, winning those battles within the match. Max Dean. An 8-3 decision for Max Dean. Bunch of high fives from his Penn State teammates. Penn State up 19-10, but still another big match coming up. Kirk Elliott and Cassiope, the big guys, coming up next. Penn State has locked this one up. They lead it 19-10, the always intense Tom and Terry Brands. Right after this duel, it's the big story, the Brands brothers. You don't want to miss it again. That is immediately following this duel. Our takedown of the match, it's brought to you by Resolite. It was Nick Lee after Jaden Ironman forced sudden victory. Nick Lee gets the takedown. He remains undefeated. The reigning Big Ten champion Ironman and the reigning national champion Lee, they'll meet again, I'm sure. Heavyweights, Greg Kirkleyitz, ranked third in the country and Ranked fifth is Tony Cassiope. These two met last year in the Big Tens. Cassiope winning 9-0 in major decision. But that was then, Jim. This is now. This is now. And, you know, Kirk is, is certainly healthier right now, which makes a big difference. How impressive was that win that he had against Mason Paris where he was able to go ahead and get three takedowns in that match against a guy that, that you know, except for his matches against Gable Stevenson, has been look, looked unbeatable. And he just pretty much kind of picked him apart. Straight on shot there by Kirk Lee. He's in a good position. Great Two job of finishing down. that. Chest sealed up against the legs, driving through. Kirk Lee at 11 and 0. Nine of those 11 victories, bonus points. And you said it, Jim. He's healthy. He's been able to settle into that Penn State program. The number one recruit out of the country in 2019 out of neutral. Sydney, Minnesota, was a 14 state champion, wrestled for go for All-American Will Shorts. But he's a different guy this he, season. He really is. And it, you know, what impressed me about that match is that he was able to go ahead and get on those legs. You know, he's got a long set of legs right there. You take a look at that frame, and, and he's, he's, he's long, but he doesn't have to. He's good at coming off his knees. You know, some heavyweights, when they get back to the, the knees, the shoelaces go flat, and there's no drive, nothing left here. But this guy lowers his levels, kind of splits the scissors, and attacks, and he can step up. Both these guys weighing in today right around 240. Of course, Cassiope took some weight off, and perfectly it put some weight on. Right now, Here we this go. Big position. Great position for Cassiope. He's got to force these types of positions right now. Bear hug. See what happens. 
And moving back in, he wants to tight. Go tightly, he's got him on his back. But rolling right through Kokleitz. Cassiope went for it. And with that takedown, he's got his first lead. He's out in front, three to two. Yeah, and Cassiope's tough in that position. For a while there, it looked like he had it tight enough to go ahead and take him. He did back points. Good job by Angel Rivera there, giving enough reaction time before the call right there. Let's take a look at this. Forcing the action. Actually, Kirkley had started with the lateral drop there, kind of fell out of position and thought he had enough room to maybe go off the mat with it, you know? And Kirkley, it's so fortunate because that arm was trapped. Yeah. 40 seconds. Again, Tony Cassiope really Work tough here, in gentlemen, tough position. Can put a lot of weight on. He's lost a little bit of weight this year with his body changeover that he's got, but he still has the skill set to be able to go ahead and lock the guy down and keep him on his hands. It's a big 20 seconds here in this first period. For giving up the first takedown, Cassiope with an escape, a takedown of his own. He's got right in time over 30 seconds. Knocking that arm out a little bit. Just slowing quickly it down. Good answering takedown and ride out for Tony Green Cassiope. Choice. Green, your choice. Kirkley takes Green. a look over at Kale Sanderson. Green, your choice. Green to first, red. I believe they got that wrong. I think it was now Cassiope's choice. What do you want, bud? He red. deferred. Neutral. And Kirkley elects to go neutral. I believe Set. that was the sequence. As we start second period. Well, it's, it's, it's a lot to ask a guy in this situation to kind of go and get after. But I think that upper body action really did favor Cassiope. I think that the curve it was a little bit out of position, not comfortable. And with Cassiope's top work, that leads Kirkley into choosing neutral, not wanting to go underneath. Cassiope Fingers, third at the Big let him go. Third at the national tournaments. Two-time All-American, he was first team in 2020. Kirkley at the national tournament entered as a nine seed after his fourth place finish, fell to Cassiope in that third place bout. He finished seventh. You notice how uh, Cassiope slightly shading to his right, okay? Trying to get a little bit of a corner right there. And, and part of it's due to Kirkley just basically kind of giving him that left, left shoulder right there, but Cassiope's taking advantage and kind of living out there on the left ear. Kirkley, it's been tough for him to create a better angle. Fingers! He's also got that left leg back. So that's why the action of the match has slowed down. You know, they've scouted and saw that the attack that he did, was able to do on Mason Paris was to that left leg. So they got that left leg tucked back pretty hard. Stop. Fingers, gentlemen. And it's really slowed quickly it down. Let's so go. finger clasping. Next time's going to be a stall call, call, gentlemen. Next time's going to be a stall call. Heavyweight in the Big Ten for the top five. What a night for heavyweight on the Big Ten Network. Gable Stevenson and Mason Paris, Tony Cassiope, Greg Kirkley. Late in the second period. All five points being scored in the first. Waved at that a few a few times. That little you know, moved ahead and wave at the lead leg. Not enough time to finish it anyway. Penn State Green snapping the Hawkeyes dual beat win streak here in the conference at 28. I was last loss in the conference, February 10th of 2018. These teams have been so good at the national tournaments. Kale Sanderson and Penn State winning eight. Tom Brands and the Hawkeyes have won four under the guidance of Coach Brands, most recently, of course, last March. Lighting time working down there for Cassiope, and I guess Penn State's bench has decided to go ahead and give the intentional release, so 4 2 score. Take down away from tying it. There First, he goes, sweep yeah. single. And he got, he got two of them. Nice job of Cassiope squaring up, dropping the hips. Now he'll get on the attack. Goes right back into that 
Bear hug situation. Here we go again, inside trip. Inside trip, something big can happen here. Oh, Cassiope brings down the Nittany Lion. Who said heavyweight's not exciting wrestling, Jim? <laughs> oh, boy. Big guys going at it. Nobody has left before heavyweight tonight. Cassiope now up six to two. You just don't know how those are going to end. Keeping him down in this position. 42 seconds left in the match. Going hard with the spiral ride. Not really coming out to the side with it, just kind of directly behind. Cassiope, five seconds for taking right in time over That's a minute. Right here, gentlemen. Six unanswered points from the Hawkeye Cassiope after giving up that first takedown. The Penn State bench just leaped for joy when they got, saw their man get in on there, but that once again, we've seen great defense from both these schools squaring up, and then Cassiope goes right into that bear hug, and he wins the leg lace bear hug position. But this is gonna end up being the Penn State win. Huge win for the Lions. They keep the momentum going into big towns. Tony Cassiope. Hard fought victory over Greg Kirkley at the decision for the Hawkeye at heavyweights. I think we should do this again, Jim. <laughs> Line him up, let's go again. Outstanding wrestler presented by Cliff Keen Athletic, a third period charge from Matt Steen. It certainly was an escape, a takedown. Near fall right here, goes ahead and goes right into the bow and arrow here, oh, blows this match wide open, and really was the decisive match for the Lion win. So Penn State comes into Iowa City, and they knock off the Hawkeyes. What a great night of wrestling. Oh, there were some great battles. Maybe not as much scoring as you'd think, but the scrambles that we saw in this meet were fantastic. And you know, and there wasn't that much separating though some of those battles that we saw right there. Guys came back and presented themselves, and. Really a fun meet to watch and ton of energy in Carver Hawkeye. This will set the stage for the Big Ten Championships between these two teams. There's head coach Tom Brands. He'll join Mark Ironside and the radio crew for the Hawkeyes. That'll do it from Iowa City. It was Penn State over the Hawkeyes 1913. For Jim Gibbons and our entire crew, I'm Shane Sparks. The wait is over. The premiere of the big story, The Brands Brothers. It starts right now on the Big Ten Network.